This video is covering male gamete formation and it's all to do with how the pollen grain produces those male gametes. In fact, how the pollen grain even comes about. To understand this, you really have to go back to the structure of the flower and the stamen, the male reproductive organ, and you have to know its structure very well. So the stamen is made up of two parts, the anther and the filament. It's the anther that we're really interested in. This is where pollen grain formation takes place. And if you were to chop off the top of an anther and look inside, you would see that it's made up of four chambers. And each one of these four chambers is known as a pollen sac. So it's really important that you get familiar with this diagram and can discuss what's inside the anther. When we look inside the anther, we see the four pollen sacs and we see that each one of them is surrounded by a layer of cells known as the epidermis. Lining each one of those pollen sacs is the tapetum. This is a layer of fibrous cells and the function of the tapetum is to provide nourishment for the development of all these pollen grains. This is just a vascular bundle at the centre of the anther. Within each of these pollen sacs are these diploid microspore mother cells and it's from these that the pollen grains will develop. So let's go through the formation of one pollen grain. So inside these pollen sacs are these diploid microspore mother cells. Let's talk about one. It undergoes meiosis to produce this group of four haploid cells known as a tetrad. This tetrad breaks apart and each of these cells, but let's discuss one, undergoes mitosis to produce this pollen grain that has two haploid nuclei, a tube nucleus and a generative nucleus. So let's go through that one more time. Inside the anther are these four chambers known as the pollen sacs. Inside the pollen sacs are these microspore mother cells. They are diploid. Each of these microspore mother cells can undergo meiosis to produce a tetrad, a group of four haploid cells. Each one of these can then undergo mitosis to produce this pollen grain that has two haploid nuclei. One of them is the tube nucleus and the other is the generative nucleus. So this is the pollen grain that you end up with. It has those two haploid nuclei, the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus. It has an inner coating known as the intine and an outer coating known as the exine. So this is the pollen grain, but remember, we still do not have those male gametes. They will be produced by this pollen grain, specifically by the generative nucleus, because it will undergo mitosis to give rise to two male gamete nuclei. So remember, the male gametes will be formed when that generative nucleus undergoes mitosis to give rise to two male gamete nuclei. And this can happen before pollination, but mostly afterwards. So when those pollen grains have been formed, it's time for their release. So the anther splits, releasing the pollen grains, and they get carried either by the wind or by an insect to the anther of a flower. So that was how the pollen grain was formed. And remember, the pollen grain is not the male gamete. It produces the male gamete. So write that statement in your answers somewhere. So the very best of luck. Remember, you have to use your textbook. You must be doing past papers. And this is an important topic. So best of luck.